This week, we discussed the NFT Bay debuting. Yes, you heard that right, the NFT Bay. And Miramax is suing Quentin Tarantino over his planned NFT sales. Also, Xbox boss Phil Spencer is not a fan of NFTs. Stay tuned and welcome to NFTs with Keys. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for all that NFT news you need. Also, comment below. It helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Um, thank you, Rick, for being here with me. Of course. Um, yeah, I think this uh, first uh, segment of uh, news here I have for us is going to bring back some memories for you. Oh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, the first thing is, uh, I'm sure you don't know yet, but there's this thing called the NFT Bay. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly how you think it is. I mean... Yo ho ho! Yeah, no, no, go, go back to you know with the torrents. Yeah, like 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 the, the pirate, pirate bay. bay? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. So now there's an NFT bay, um, huh. as the name suggests. It's you know the NFT version of the infamous pirate bay. I mean, let's be honest. I'm pretty sure everybody, even out there, has used the pirate bay. <laughs> uh, allegedly. 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 There, yeah. No, no confirmed cases. Yeah. Of that. Everything that I, I download or, or get on the internet is always on the up and up. Is it though? Anyways, so uh, the site debuted uh, this last week, and um, apparently someone took the time to right-click save pretty much every NFT that's out there. What a waste of time. I, I mean, well, why why would why would you do that? I, I guess that's cool. It's like a time capsule, maybe. Well, yeah, and I, I think really is it's kind of just a big kind of F you to the NFT community. But me personally, I think it's really funny. Because uh, let's be honest, like... The, the fact that someone sat there and decided to download all the NFTs that have been made on Solana and uh, Ethereum, that's crazy. That's insane. It's a lot of time. I mean, I feel like it's either... Uh, yeah, it is a lot of time, but why present it in a way where it's like, oh, you download it? Or, oh, unless the uh, the end result is they're of the same mindset that they're just hyperlinks. Yeah, well, I think the big thing is it's just being like, they're just JPEGs, you know? Yeah, NFTs always... are weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> NFTs are weird. Uh, yeah, so the guy who created it, his name is Jeffrey Huntley. Um, he, he did so because he wants the future generation to be able to study NFTs, or so he says. Okay. He was quoted saying, as Web 2.0 web hosts are known to go offline, 404 errors, Very true. this handy torrent contains all the NFTs so the future generation can study this generation's tulip mania and collectively go WTF. Available to you merely one link away at the... Very comfortable size of 60 terabytes? What? Uh, no, 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 I'll get there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he also went on to say, uh, uh, WTF, we destroyed our planet for this. Which I guess this Jeffrey guy thinks NFTs are going to destroy the world due to the, what? Do what the, the Energy cost the to, to mine. power? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah it, it's... I mean, let's. It's, uh, most people's believe. I don't know. I mean, it's something they just put out. I, I don't want to get into that. I, I mean, I get Whole it. Show. And I, I mean, I get it. You want to, you know, be more environmentally sound but you do realize the state of california pushes out more pollution and more carbon emissions than all of nft minting like let's be real here like you're talking fractions i mean not to be that guy but hey do you recycle China? you feel, do you feel good about yourself like i'm pretty sure your green footprint is worse than what these Bitcoin miners are doing. Yeah, exactly. Come so, on. so the torrent files of, or file uh, of with all the NFTs, it's about twenty terabytes. That's ridiculous. That what a joke. It, I, yeah, let me just okay. Yeah, and, and, but again, you're talking about JPEGs, so these mm -hmm. things are kilobytes in size. So many. Uh, <laughs> and someone took the time to document all of this, though. Yeah. So I do find this really funny, uh, mostly just because you know. Uh, allegedly using the Pirate Bay back when I was in my younger youths. Yeah, so I just think it's a really funny thing. I do think it is just a giant middle finger to the NFT community as a whole. But pretty much I, what I'm getting from the NFT community is it's the same thing how everybody treats the right-click crowd, you know? It's just like, so you have some fake stuff. Like, you know, Cool, if you want the image just to have on your phone or whatever, fine. And then it was, I was actually discussing this with my roommate while I was going down with everything, and he mm -hmm. was just like... Oh, it's going to be funny when you start seeing people putting on, you know, Twitter or Facebook, you know, the, the these uh, as PFPs, the, the, these, the, you know, like a board ape. And it's like, oh, you don't own that one. And I'm like, well, that's not going to work now because 
Facebook and Twitter and Instagram are starting to get into, you know, the crypto space and the NFT space. So they're doing verified NFT profile pictures. So you wouldn't be able to have, you know, board ape 40, 44, six, you know, because it's going to be taken by someone. And that one's wow. going to, so think about it. Like even owning those isn't really I, that I, big of a deal. The industry that the NFT market just creates like that, that just, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm just going to get into my meta profile. Wow. You have a board ape as your PFP. You know it's real because it's verified. Yeah. It, it has to be verified. You can't just put. Well, gone are the days of of putting in something like you can't even put your own picture that you took. Wow. Yeah. That's I need a, to see like you need to NFT the picture first, <laughs> personal NFT, and then we'll allow you to put it in. It needs to be verified. Yeah. It needs to be minted on Meta's chain. Oh, I don't like the way that's all sounds. It's yeah. too easy to think about. Someone even worse out there. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I just thought it was really interesting, and I I do think there's some some ramifications that can come from it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. In some other weird NFT news, uh, Whitney Houston is releasing an NFT. Yeah, she, she's dead, but somehow she's releasing an NFT. I'm assuming her estate is doing it or whoever owns this NFT. Okay. Um, so remember when I mentioned um, Quincy Jones is starting an NFT marketplace? Mm -hmm. I think that was back in one of my first episodes. Um, so this song in question is never before heard. And it was recorded when Whitney Houston was 17 years old. So, so yeah, that's going to be interesting. I don't know what it sounds like. I don't think anyone does at this point. And it is going to be auctioned off uh, in NFT form on Quincy Jones's platform. So that's kind of cool. I, I don't know. Mm. I'm not a big Whitney Houston fan. This might, you know, for some of you people out there, you, you know, you might like that stuff. Uh, I do think the music NFTs are on the precipice of blowing up. So I think it is kind of interesting to see. I mean, although you might not like Whitney Houston's music, she wasn't a phenomenal singer, you mm -hmm. know. So it is kind of a, it, it is a piece of history in a sense because we've all heard a Whitney Houston song in our lifetime. Even little kids have probably heard it because their parents have played one. Especially if you've ever been point. to if you've ever been to a wedding, you for sure have heard a Whitney Houston concert or a Whitney Houston song, not a concert. <laughs> but uh, so the bidding starts December first on Quincy Jones platform. Like I said, it's, mm -hmm. um, the platform is one of. Uh, I think he purposely placed it uh, placed the auction date uh, December first because that's the same time that Art Basel is going on in Miami. So I think it's kind of you know you're going to gather a lot of wealthy influential people in one area and then this auction is going to go live it'll it should create some type of a uh, hype to it um something a little off topic from this that i didn't touch down the first time i mentioned one of is i had no idea it was on the tezos blockchain oh huh i had no idea i for some reason i felt like it was on solana i think is what i thought it was but yeah so That's cool yeah it's on tezos i thought that was pretty interesting um in some other news uh miramax is suing Quentin Tarantino over the Pulp Fiction NFTs. The Miramax seven. is still around? Yeah. And so, I, you know, what's funny is I thought Disney still owned Miramax, and I found out they didn't. But yeah, Miramax. Huh. The ones who made those movies, you know, the Kevin Smith ones. Oh, oh, uh, it was such classics as Blunt Man and Chronic. Yeah. And Jay and Silent Bob. And, and Cockknocker, my favorite Mark Hamill appearance. <laughs> Seriously, it's your finest work. <laughs> so, hey, you know how I got that name? True story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah I, I did think it was kind of interesting that um, Miramax is suing them I mean I guess it's not really because wow. you, you're dealing with you know the NFT space and how much money is being generated and let's be real these Tarantino these seven Tarantino they'll sell they're, they're gonna sell and probably sell for high money and they'll yeah. probably resell for even higher money and keep going down that path because the, it's cult classic. It's yeah, exactly. cult. We use the word that it's real. Yeah, they it's, call it that for a reason. Yeah, it's like whether or not you like the movie, you've heard of the movie, you've probably seen the movie, or so, the GIF, or, or GIF, or yeah, or, or something. You, like every everyone's you know has some sort of like knowledge of what Pulp Fiction is. It's affected you. Yeah. So Miramax argues that Tarantino would be violating uh, the copyright if it uh, if it that it holds. Sorry. Uh, the lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court of Central of the Central District of California. Mm -hmm. uh, it accuses Tarantino, T Tarantino of breaching his contract, copyright, and trademark infringement, and unfair competition. Uh, the claim 
the complaint also claims Tarantino signed an agreement on June 23rd, 1993, which gave Miramax the sole and exclusive rights to all copyrights and trademarks for the film. So it does seem like they might win depending on what the NFTs are going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, the suit does state that the that Tarantino does hold some reserved rights, but they're far too narrow for him to uh, unilaterally produce, market, and sell any kind of NFT. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it will be interesting to see what happens there. Miramax also is claiming, uh, if left unchecked, Tarantino's conduct... Uh, could mislead others into believing Miramax is involved with this venture. 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 I didn't even think Miramax was still around. Who's yeah. gonna think Miramax is any part of it? Exactly. Like when I saw this, I was like, okay, I, I know Miramax is still around, but I had no like that was not the first thought when I first reported on this. I hadn't. I didn't even think Miramax. Uh, it didn't even come up in my mind. So it's like the fact that Miramax oh, clearly thinks they're bigger than they are. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how, how do you know that they aren't, maybe they are hurting and this is their way to get some pocket change because they know this is going to work. Uh, and because they think about it too, if let's say it does get shut down and they win this lawsuit, then they can still release a Pulp Fiction NFT that's going to sell regardless yeah. of if it's from Tarantino or not. That's true. Um, Tarantino's lawyer, Brian Friedman, uh, did say Miramax is wrong, plain and simple. Quentin Tarantino's contract is clear. He has the right to sell NFTs of his handwritten script for Pulp Fiction and his ham-fisted attempt to prevent him and this ham-fisted attempt to prevent him from doing so will fail. And I think that is the crux of the issue where I do think Tarantino will win it. Okay. Is they own the rights to the film and to the, let's say, the script as it was for the film. Right. What he announced he was going to be doing for these seven NFTs are not before, never before seen unreleased material. We know the script's been released. You can probably download it or find it for free somewhere on, mm-hmm. on the internet. So it's not like that is what he's talking about. And it does sound like also, too, with the NFTs that he's releasing, he's going to have voiceovers with them. So, you know, it, it'll be interesting. I do think that Tarantino will win this overall. Just be, and it all depends, like I said. like depends on how he's doing the NFTs. If it's going to be him with, like, a still image of somebody that he mm-hmm. has made so it avoids copyright issues that way, and then he's just talking, or, you know, maybe some he gets an artist to draw up a scene of what the scene would have been, and then he is talking over it to tell you what the scene would have been, that Miramax has no right to that. Wow. So it's insane the litigation that's gonna have to go through just to make these NFTs. But it yeah. sounds to me like they're still gonna be making these. Yeah, exactly. Like no matter what, you're gonna see a Pulp Fiction NFT, whether it's coming from Tarantino himself or Miramax. It sounds like or shoot, you might even get both. Cause That'd I mean, be cool. Yeah, I mean, no matter I, what. Honestly, I what I think it's gonna turn into, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head here. Miramax is I bet this is all my thought, but Miramax is probably hurting. The mm-hmm. NFT game is, is real. This yeah. these Tarantino NFTs are going to make real money. Oh yeah. What they're doing is they're getting the lawsuit prepared so that they're saying, Hey, you know, we know we want the money. And what's gonna happen is they'll probably settle outside of court with some kind of split. Yeah. You know, and, and this lawsuit's really just par for the course and they have to do this to get the money. Yeah, hundred percent. Maria, you're probably Probably right, Miramax. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, you know what, Miramax, you probably deserve a cut of this. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I agree. Like, I, I think the best way probably would have been instead of Miramax suing him. Like an 80-20? He, he probably should have just, they should have just, That's like, probably what it'll they, turn they into. Prob- yeah, they probably should have just reached out and been like, hey, we'll give you, like, the video. Oh, well, well, let's be honest here. If you're making money here, my first thought isn't, how, who am I going to give my money to? My first thought is, I'm going to get in on this NFT game and make some yeah. money and then see what feathers get ruffled. And, yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll see what we deal with after that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I can't, can't disagree with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. um, in some other news, too, uh, the NFL, um, I know I mentioned them. They're going to be doing stuff, some stuff with Dapper Labs later. Right. Um, but in the meantime, the NFL is adding NFTs to tickets to certain games. So there's actually like um, uh, basically a QR code. Okay. Um, so on the physical ticket, you can go to the website mm-hmm. and then you can get it. It's essentially just a ticket. It's a 
like a did like a, a digital ticket okay but like if you have a physical ticket you can get the nft from it from these certain games uh so the nfl announced that they are going to be releasing these commemorative nfts on tickets for select games the first set i do believe uh of the nft tickets was uh released during the november 7th game against the arizona cardinals and okay. the san francisco 49ers um so yeah i mean hmm. that's kind of cool uh the next big release is on thanksgiving day uh, against the Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions. Um, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. All right. uh, the NFL Club Business Development uh, Senior Vice President uh, Bobby Gallo says um, leveraging all emerging world, uh, uh, leveraging the emerging world of the NFTs uh, is a new and exciting way for us to create additional value and to further engagement with fans mm. who intent, who attend select games by providing a virtual commemorative ticket. There is no better time than the upcoming holiday season to kick off this fun and engaging fan experience, starting with the Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions Thanksgiving Day matchup. Um, no, <laughs> no, it's the Lions. They tied last Sunday. They have no wins. Do you, it's like the NFL wants to immortalize the fact that you win to a Lions game. Hey, maybe. If you're a Bears fan, fine. I, I give you a pass. But <laughs> Let's be honest here. This could be it. This could be what the Lions need. This is what makes the Lions that Super Bowl team. Now that they're going to be commemorated in the NFT space, for some reason these Lions are playing like they've never played before. That's going to be a force to be reckoned with. They wouldn't even make the playoffs if they tried. They're already down. It's already halfway through the season. They might, if they did, they'd end up eight and eight and still getting kicked out. I'm sorry, Lions fans. I really tried here, but uh, I, I think we. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, so they do have a full set, a uh, full set schedule for what games will uh, have the NFT tickets tied to the physical tickets, and they also did something. I knew some people they'll buy uh, the tickets and they won't have a physical beyond their um, like their wallet and their uh, phone or something like that, mm -hmm. and so they scan it. But you will get a link sent to you where you can download, cool. where you will send it to you, and you can get the um, the free NFT. Well, I guess it's not free. You're spending like three hundred dollars to go to a football game, a Lions game. Just remember that. It's a Lions they, game. Hey, listen. We talk all this nonsense on the Lions, but the games are sold out. That, that is true. These tickets sell. Yeah, these fans. So it's like I am talking kind of some crap here on the fans, but you guys like die are hard. Die hard fans. Like you guys fill that stadium every Sunday. Th and there's your a team reason. Sucks. Th there's a reason the Lions still exist, <laughs> and it's because of all of you. You're paying these people's paychecks, and you're keeping the dream alive. Uh, yeah. The hope and the wish for a Lions player is to get transferred to a real team. Yeah, I'm 100. percent Like, yeah, 100. percent That's why I felt bad for Jared Goff. But anyways, so I do like. <laughs> I do think uh, this is honestly a really smart uh, ploy. Yeah. Um, it's a marketing ploy, really. Let's be honest. The NFL is trying to get their fan base engaged in NFTs before the Dapper Labs NFT, NFL marketplace opens up. Mm -hmm. And if you do this, you're giving out free NFTs. And then when the that marketplace opens up, it'll probably be similar to how uh, NBA Top Shots are being done. And those are rel relatively cheap. I mean, sure, some of the rare packs can go for you know a couple hundred dollars. Um, their legendary packs can be you know close to a thousand dollars. Uh, and but their common packs are like twelve dollars at least on NBA Top Shot, and I would mm -hmm. assume it'd be kind of a similar pricing for the NFL. And so that's right in line with the price point for anybody who's going to go um, to an NFL game because it, huh. it's it is expensive. So I do think this is a really smart idea for them. It's kind of it seems dumb, but when you look at it further in a business uh, mentality, mm -hmm. it makes a ton of sense, and I, I think it it'll help them, especially get those uh, people who are unfamiliar because you got to think the NFL is. There's a lot of older people in that crowd. True, true. So, and you know what I'm excited for? Uh, like the, the third-party markets, the auction houses, the pawn shops, things like that that have to deal with NFTs. They have to take it seriously. So yeah, yeah. Real money. Yeah, pawn exactly. shop NFTs. Wow. Yeah. So in, in some other news, too, the Xbox boss man, Phil Spencer, yep. apparently is pretty mad or, I guess, upset with NFTs. Oh, well, that's uh, probably one of two reasons. Can't make them himself, so he can't make money, or can't get the rights to the things he has, so he can't make money. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's be honest. It's probably true. Uh, the Xbox boss uh, said, uh, is hesitant about the nature of NFTs and how they can be exploitive, mm -hmm. um, which I totally get, uh, especially since... You know, we've seen personal friends get scammed, you know, from NFT drops. So it's like, I kind of get it. I uh, know people that play FIFA, they started getting those loot boxes. Yeah, that's Scams. another, you know, it's another scam. It's gambling, let's be real. Uh, he did say uh, what, I'd, what I'd say today on NFTs all up is I think there is a lot of speculation and experimentation that's happening. And that's uh, and that's some that's some of that's some of the creative uh, that I see today feels more exploitative than about uh, than about entertainment. So basically, what he's saying is he basically sees NFTs more of as an exploit than mm -hmm. it is as an entertainment. And you know, being Xbox boss, you know, his whole thing is entertainment, and he's full of shit. <laughs> I mean, tell me how you really feel. But I agree. Just because a person can make a couple dollars while enjoying a video game. Yeah, and, and let's be real here. When we're talking NFTs and we're referring to Microsoft or, or to Xbox, we're not talking about board apes. Right. We're talking more along the lines of Axie Infinity. You know, more of the play-to-earn NFT games, not, you know, just a JPEG that you put as a profile picture. like Or True. a Metaverse um uh, avatar like we're talking about actual games here so spencer also uh said that he doesn't think nfts in the gaming space are bad but it does seem like he's walking a fine line here because he he he's saying one thing he doesn't think it's a bad thing but then he's also making microsoft tell valve to not put up play to earn games or nft games so okay. i mean you know what's that saying goes uh action speaks louder than words mm -hmm. right? i think that's how mm -hmm. it goes so i mean sure he might be saying he doesn't think it's bad for the gaming industry but his actions are pretty much saying he's not for them um so again, he's not saying he's against NFT games, but so far, like I said, the actions he's taken seems to me like he he is kind of against them. Spencer's comments also come um, after Take Two and EA both announced that um, they'll be getting into the NFT space. Okay, and we also can't forget about Ubisoft already announcing that they're in development for an NFT game. Which please NFT Splinter Cell game, please. Right, maybe. Or even just, just you just forego the NFT project altogether and Splinter Cell? Please. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, please. Just another one, please. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I, I personally think Spencer uh, might be a bit mad also because I did see that there was a collection of Master Chief heads um, up for sale. So, no, of course. Exactly. So maybe that might be why he's a little... Uh, just not able to get money from it. Even the play to earn, uh, I can see that from, from someone like Microsoft's perspective. Why would I do that? Why would I give Why would I give the player an ability to earn money? I'm sure they would completely implement something like this if the play to earn was a digital currency and you doing the work actually made them money. So yeah, it's play to earn, all right. Play to earn for Microsoft, well, but, but you get in-game gold. Well, what I would be interested to see is... With some of these games, what if they created some way to mine within the game and the game will generate passive income? Oh, for the oh, developers? you mean like, I don't know, put some part of the code into the program to utilize some RAM or some CPU or some GPU to chug away at a blockchain? Yeah, sure. I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, it, like it's not already being done. Come on. Yeah, now. yeah. That's that's my point when yeah, I was getting yeah. that there. So it's like, you'd think you would be a little bit more on board when you can implement something like that. And then you get, I don't know, the millions of the people who play on xbox oh i didn't consent to this wallet did you download my game you consented <laughs> you know what i mean so it's kind of like apple did you do you remember that uh south park episode? the human sent ipad yeah it's it's everything i've wanted it's an ipad it connects to the internet and it shits in kyle's mouth <laughs> uh yes great i love it uh also uh i i I don't think he's uh, completely against the NFTs in it, but I do. Obviously, he is hesitant, and as I did, or as he his actions, you know, proving kind of different than what he said. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest thing uh, with him being hesitant that I think is very detrimental is, as we said, Ubisoft, EA, Take Two are jumping into this head first, and they're ready for it. And if Xbox waits too long or Microsoft in general waits too long for well, this, they're going to get left behind. And let's be honest. That like, could be true. Yeah, you're probably that, right. Like, cause, That's a good point. I, I mean, 
we're talking NFTs are huge, but right on the precipice is music NFTs, which is already changing the way the music industry works because the music industry learned their lesson with the digital music. They're not going to fall. Cough, off. cough, cough, Napster, cough, yeah. cough, Kazaa, uh, LimeWire. Yeah, oh. they, they, learn, they learn their lesson, bear share. They learn their lesson with the... Uh, you know what happened uh during that digital music era mm -hmm. so i think the gaming industry too should is always been pretty good at keeping up on trends and stuff and True. when you see a lot of the big names almost all of the big names getting ready or developing you have to game, take notice you have to and when you are that big conglomerate that is microsoft and xbox like you have to take note of that so yeah i think it'll be interesting how that turns out man nfts are Fucking weird. The weird man. man. <laughs> Super weird. It's like, a whole industry. Industries are being created. Lawsuits are having to be had. You know, people curators. are releasing music that they're dead. Like it's just it's insane. I just don't understand how. Oh, like, that reminds me. I can't wait for Pac's new album. Seriously, NFT, you know, the, doesn't Eminem own all of the? Uh, really? Yeah, I think he owns all the lyrics or all the like the uh, pre-recorded vocals and stuff. He, so it's like, M, please. Oh, please. Please. But anyways, thanks you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Rick, for being here As with always, me. As always, of course. You know, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell. Also, comment and share this video with everyone you know. And I did notice we've been getting a lot of viewership, especially on our buddies uh, or on the channel from the Hosky video. So thank you, everybody who's been tuning in and all the subscribers. We love you. You know. If we got another 9,999 of you, we might get paid. And you know what that means. Giveaways. Just, just go tell your friends. It's, it's, it's simple. All 9,999 9, of your buddies. You just grab your phone. Hit that subscribe button. There you go. You know. So yeah, go follow me on Twitter at NFTs with Keys. As well as my friends at Our Heroes Crypto. And also too, if you have ADA, go join their stake pool. Ticker AGC. So there you go. Thank you, everybody. Deuces. Here I come from the West.